The, um, the three primary challenges when it comes to uranium extraction in, in Greenland, um, basically, the, well, first is the zero tolerance policy itself. It, it's currently in place, uh, and that will have to be lifted or at least somehow changed, adapted to be able to allow for extraction depending on what mine we're talking about. Uh, so the current Greenlandic government has noted that it's uh, in its uh, coalition agreement that it wants to have the zero tolerance policy repealed. They'll have to do that in the Greenlandic parliament in the fall. They'll have to debate that and, and discuss it and have a very good public debate about it. Same thing will also have to happen in, in Denmark. So because we're in this very interesting new situation with the 2009 Act on Self-Government for Greenland, giving Greenland 100% uh, authority over its natural resources, but at the same time, Copenhagen is responsible for the defense, security, non-proliferation, uh, monetary immigration aspects when it comes to the kingdom as a whole. This is where we're going to have to have a new conversation uh, between Greenland and Denmark that we haven't had before. And that will mean them talking about the zero tolerance policy, but also nuclear non-proliferation issues, foreign policy, and how they're actually going to come as a kingdom uh, unit um, when we're talking about the, the international fora. Another challenge, of course, is then the regulation legislation aspect. So if the zero tolerance policy is going to be lifted, then at the same time, there has to be how is uh, the kingdom, which is, has essentially forgone the nuclear fuel cycle, except for medical purposes, going to build a regulatory system almost from scratch. Uh, there'll have to be discussions again between Greenland and Denmark about conditions of supply. Who are they going to sell to? Who are they not going to sell to? How are they going to make sure that they know the difference? Um, making sure that they have a system of verification and monitoring in place to be able to follow uh, the Greenlandic and, and Kingdom flag as they go through. Uh, and then this is also further challenged by the third uh, aspect, which is the lack of an internationally uh, robust regulation system. So the International Atomic Energy Agency in Vienna only does a very small portion of actually requiring states to do reporting uh, on the trade of yellow cake. So you have under the Comprehensive Safeguards Agreement an arrangement or an aspect or provision in there where they have to report exports and the imports of uh, uranium concentrate. But this is not done uh, very completely by a lot of states and some states don't even do it if they consider uranium as a byproduct. Uh, uranium, however, is not just a rock. Uh, it certainly should be monitored and reported if it's going for nuclear purposes. And then the other aspect is the additional protocol that the IAEA has, which is its best measure to be able to get a sense of, of the entire fuel cycle within a state. And with, under that, Denmark and Greenland have to provide reporting on mining activities, uh, production, uh, annual production rates, potential production, purity, these types of things. Uh, so if you are the kingdom and you're trying to start from scratch from all of this, you need to keep all of this in context and recognize that uh, the kingdom has to go beyond uh, the international regulations as they are and then how it is going to make sure that its uh, uranium, if it is going to be shipped out, is not going to a nuclear weapons program, whether legitimate or illegitimate.